So these little blocks, there's one on either end, they are there to kind of act as a guide. Basically, once it gets to those stops, I know that's in the right position. Then I use this piece of lead to stop it moving this way. So the block stops the piece moving outwards and the, um, the lead stops it moving inwards. And when we bond it, we put lead on top and that, uh, that's the clamp basically. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go on the outside. I've got the scaffolding set up down here and I'm going to mark along the edge of this because it's obviously too, uh, too wide. So I, what I do is I take a piece of kusa and just to give it a little bit of tolerance, an extra half an inch beyond where we need, um, and I mark it all the way along and then cut that off with the jigsaw. So let's go and mark that. All right, so now we're on the outside and I'm going to mark right here. All right, that's that marked. And then grab the jigsaw and cut along the line. So there's that piece with the edge cut off, and now we're just going to give it a try to fit. There's the blocks that set against the, the works. There we go. So now what I got to do is put some lead on top of this and figure out how I'm going to uh, hold it down before starting to mix the epoxy. So let's uh, let's get some of the lead ingots over here and start seeing how this is going to work. plastic under here when we do it for her for real. Just in case there's any epoxy gets on top. I don't want to end up with the lead and gets bonded to the piece obviously. Up some cusset and go to it. 
or mix it, sorry. Mix up some epoxy and then go to it. Spread that down, put the kusa uh, down, put the lead on top, and we're all good to go. I wonder if I should turn this one over and then put that one up the other way. Maybe that's the way. Okay, so I got the epoxy on there. I forgot to fill it with again. I will do that next time. Show you that in a couple of seconds on the next section. Here we go. Okay, so I've got this piece cut and ready to install. I've already had the, the lead sitting on it once just to test fit it all. Um, now it's time to clean the surfaces. So I'm gonna take some acetone and clean both the mating surfaces for this bulwarks. So I'm uh, gonna bond this piece of kusa in place here, like so. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, clean the mating surfaces and uh, any dust off the other side. And uh, then we can let that, that uh, solvent flash off and we're ready to, uh, to epoxy this in. So let's go ahead and do that now. These gloves, uh, the thin nitro ones aren't any good for that. So I'm going to the, these nine mil, nine mil nitro gloves. The other ones, uh, they just disintegrate. These ones last a little bit longer with the salt. All right, let's clean both these surfaces. Now I've already sanded these. Everything's nice and smooth from the uh, residual epoxy. Um, just keep turning the rag. Find a new spot. the underside, the mating surface, so we'll clean that. All right, so we'll let that flash off for a few minutes, and then we'll start to epoxy. So actually, I finally remembered to uh, start the camera and film this portion. So uh, here I am mixing the uh, West System Epoxy and this is kind of the mix that I use. Um, just the, the, not the ratio of course, but the, the thickening. Um, what I, how I thicken the epoxy in terms of the, uh, the amount that I use. I uh, take the two components, the hardener and the resin, and I mix them for, I count to about 70, 80, and I call that good enough. And then I add the, uh, the thickening agent, which is the uh, silica. I find for, you know, three pumps of each with this disposable spoon that I'm using, which is no way of measurement of any kind, that I'm using basically three and maybe a half. Now the three are heaping and the other one is, you gotta kinda gauge it by the temperature and everything, but that's kinda my ballpark and it gives a good thickened epoxy to the point where it's gonna stay where I want it to, but it's also gonna spread out once I put a little bit of pressure on it. You wouldn't want it too thick then, you know, as you put the weight from the, uh, the lead on top, maybe it wouldn't spread it out. But I find this works quite nicely. 
So here I go, I'm gonna apply this. I just take that uh, tongue depressor and uh, spread it onto the surface. I try to spread it out as much as I can um, just so it doesn't kick off uh, too quickly. The, the more uh, concentrated or the, 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 the higher quantity of uh, epoxy you have in the, in the container all pushed together it, it sort of starts kicking itself off you know the heat builds up and then that, uh, that just continues to accelerate the uh, curing process. I'm using a small disposable uh, notch trowel here um, and I found those online. I'll actually add those to the description if you're looking for anything like that. They're about a buck a piece US. Here we go, second batch. The video is running at two times speed here. Otherwise it would be really long and boring to watch. One technique that I find is useful is when I'm uh, adding the uh, silica, instead of tapping it on the, um, the plastic container that I'm, I've got the epoxy in, I just tap my hand and it all falls in. I'm always concerned about uh, contaminating the uh, silica, putting the spoon back into the silica and ending up with lumps. I haven't had that problem. And the funny thing about this is, and I'm just about getting there now, um, the camera overheats. So I'm unable to film the whole uh, mixing and applying uh, procedure, but it's all the same. It's just uh, what I did was apply three coats of uh, or th three containers and spread it all out. So, so you're not going to see all that, but here we go. We're applying the Kusa now. <laughs> 